church when he just said, I will judge. How will he then erase the judgment? How will he cancel the judgment? How will he totally forget the judgment? He tells us in verse 30, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruins. It says, all you need to do is to just turn. And when you turn and you repent, then iniquity will not be your ruin. Verse 31, cast away from you. And this is what repentance means if you have been here in the world. I say, I, I don't understand. Repent. Repent. What does that mean? What would I do? That heaven will acknowledge that I have repented. What you see the Lord is telling me to do is telling us in different ways. If you look at Bastachi, it says repent and turn. To repent means to turn. And then he tells us in verse 31, cast away from you all your transgressions. It means you look at all your transgressions, every way you have transgressed, every way you have sinned, every way you have done what is not right. You bundle everything together and you cast them away. You throw them away from you. That's what it means to repent. And that is the first indispensable step in getting to the spiritual fulfillment that the Lord has provided for us. And then it says, whereby he have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. It is to discard the old. It is to abandon the old ways. It is to jettison the old ways. It is to forget all about the old habits. And then you say, I cast them away. I turn my mind from them. I yield myself unto God. It's not going to be a new style, a new life, a new way, a new, a new direction that I'm going to take now. And then you say, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Verse 32, for I have no pleasure. In the death of him that died, says the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and what? And live ye. We're going to live. Eternal life belongs to us through Christ. We're going to have that eternal life in Jesus' name. And the way we do that is to take that indispensable step to turn, to cast away all the transgression and then to make a new heart and a new spirit and then to tell the Lord from now on we're going to live in a new new way let's look at Mark chapter 1 Mark chapter 1 remember we're talking about steps leading to spiritual fulfillment we're talking about the steps that lead us into the enjoyment of the provision of God through Christ at Calvary. In Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, we're reading from verse 14. Now, after the John was put in prison, Jesus came up into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. This is my time. I said, this is my time. The time is fulfilled. If those people that saw Christ in the Saturday ministry, if only they had known that that was their time, the time of fulfillment, the time of fruitfulness, and a time of refreshing coming from the Lord. And a time that all the prophets and the preachers of the old covenant had been talking about. If they had only known that that was their time. And that all they needed to do was to take the step. And then they will get into that fulfillment. 
what a wonder it will have been in their lives. They didn't even know, but thank God we know. I say thank God we know that this is our own time that God has put in his hand. That the fulfillment of the discovery of those hidden riches. The discovery of those wonderful things the Lord himself has prepared and promised for us. Is the time of fulfillment. Verse 15. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. What step are we going to take? How are we going to get there? Are we going to receive that fulfillment? It says, repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent, turn, change, be transformed. Repent ye and believe the gospel. And the Lord wants this blessing everywhere for everyone. For everyone in every nation. That's why he said, you go into the world and continue to proclaim and announce to them. I want everybody to be blessed. Jesus Christ said he didn't come to condemn, he came to save. He didn't come to condemn, he came to refresh the people with blessings in their lives. And if they're going to have it, you will tell them there is a step that leads into that spiritual fulfillment. In Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 45. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Then open he the understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You are understanding the scriptures. I said you are understanding the scriptures. The Lord has been marvelously kind and marvelously good unto you. That he has opened your understanding. He has opened your heart. And now you understand what way leads to that spiritual fulfillment, fruitfulness, accomplishment. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and search unto them. Thus it is written. And thus it behooved befitted Christ to suffer. And to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached. Repentance and remission of sins should be preached. The Lord is saying, Yes, I know what you need. You need blessing, you need fulfillment, you need success, you need accomplishment, you need joy, you need fulfillment. And you need happiness in your life. I know what you want. I know what you crave. I know what you desire. And then the Lord said, He sent preachers out. He said, Go and show them the right way, the proper way, the scriptural way, and the Christ like way, the way of Christ, how they can have that spiritual fulfillment. He said, there is no short cut. And you know, the pity is that there are people that do not know the way. And they do not know the steps that we ought to take. That you and I, that everybody needs to take to get into spiritual fulfillment. All they do is show short cuts into the blessings of God. There is no short cut. There is only one way that leads into that spiritual fulfillment. That's why Jesus declared. That's why he told his own disciples whom he named apostles. And now he told them in verse 47 and he said that repentance and removal, remission, cleansing, blotting out, remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You see what the Lord has planned? You see what the Lord has given? You see the step he has outlined so that you and I and everyone listening to the word of God here and everywhere, how we can have the spiritual fulfillment. He says in all nations, everywhere you tell them about repentance. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 17, 
Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. I'm looking at you from Bastachi and Bastachi 1. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. What's the meaning of that? Wink. That means to blink your eyes. And then to just close your eyes momentarily. The times of ignorance, God wants to close his eyes. And then not some things we did when we were ignorant. Ignorant of the requirement of the Lord. Ignorant of the requirement of Christ. Ignorant of the requirement of the Almighty God. And we did some things we don't even want to remember. And God says, I'm willing to overlook them. I'm willing to overlook everything you've done in the past so that you will become a candidate for blessing. You'll be a candidate for blessing. I said you'll be a candidate for blessing. Then he tells us how that will be done for now, commandeth all men, all men who desire to have their spiritual fulfillment, all men who desire to have the accomplishment of the promises of God in their lives. Now he commandeth all men everywhere to do what? Tell me out loud. To repent. When you repent, Oh, the Lord says, the past, forget about it, I have forgotten. You know, there are some people, even after they are born again, after they are saved, like those who came out yesterday, like those who responded and came out this morning, the devil will be telling you lies. He'll be saying, what you did the other time, what you did the other time, is trying to play on your ignorance. Now the Lord is opening your eyes, he says, because you have given your life to Christ. And because you have responded and yielded to the call of the Lord, all the past, the Lord has forgotten. I said the Lord has forgotten. He forgives, he forgets, he blots everything out. The moment you repent, the moment you turn, because he has appointed a day in verse 31, in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. That's talking about the people who don't repent. The people who, who do not turn away from their sin, that they will judge them in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men, in that he has raised him from the dead. Step number one, repentance. Step number two, reconciliation. Step Number two, reconciliation. Reconciliation with all saints and sinners. That, that includes everybody on earth. Everybody you know. Reconciliation with them. Reconciliation. And you know why you reconcile? Because you want blessing. Because you want the riches, hidden riches. And you want the hidden treasures. That's why you, you reconcile. And you know, sometimes we are the people that delay the unlimited riches of glory of the kingdom coming upon our lives. Your blessing will no more be delayed. The riches will no more be delayed. And those treasures the Lord wants to point your life will not be delayed anymore in Jesus' name. Because once you take the steps, number one is repentance. Number two is reconciliation. Why? I want you to notice our family. In a family, we have two children. And these two children, daddy lost them very much. And he wants to give them this, he wants to give them this, he wants to give them that. But there is something he wants in that family. He says, daddy and mommy are united. Daddy and mommy, they have affection for one another. Daddy and mommy, they are they see eye to eye. And you two children, if there is anything we want for you, is that you must be united, love one another as children of this family. When this one is going this way, go together. When this one is moving this way, go together. And then daddy sees that A and B, the first and the second, they are having some disagreements. And he calls them, he said, this breaks my heart. 
I want to bless you. God has blessed this family with riches untold. And the riches are not for daddy and mommy. They are for you children. I want something from you. Settle your differences. Erase all the offenses. Reconcile with one another. After you reconcile with one another, come back to me and let me know. And let me see that evidence of reconciliation among you. And all the resources in the family, they belong to you. And now those children, if they didn't act quickly, and they didn't reconcile with one another, that you will be waiting until they reconcile. The blessings are there for them. The riches are there for them. The wealth is there for them. The great provision in the family is there for them. And that is only waiting, reconcile. And that's what is happening in the Christian family. The Lord is saying, spiritual blessings are yours already. All the riches of glory, they are yours already. All the provision of Calvary, they are yours already. Why don't we all have them? The Lord is saying, I'm waiting to see reconciliation in my family. I'm waiting to see reconciliation among my creatures. He made us all. You know all those sinners God created them? And all these people you see, children of God, God redeemed us. And he doesn't want any of us to be in opposition to one another. If there is anything that brought any kind of disagreement, he says, reconcile. And that will be the next step for you to get into the spiritual blessing. You are getting there already. I said you are getting there already. Why don't you reconcile with my brother there? Why don't you reconcile with my sister here? Why don't you reconcile with everyone there? And then you launch into the deep resources of the Almighty God. Point number two, reconciliation with all saints and sinners. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading there from verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 17. Here it says in verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, anybody in Christ here today? Anybody in Christ here today? I am in Christ. I said I am in Christ. When you turn away from your sin and you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior that brought you into Christ. And right now, by the grace of God and the strength of the Lord, by the